moment in time he has seated us in his home and he has given us the ability to perform a great act of worship he has allowed us to listen to the Quran he has allowed us the ability to do his dhikr to remember him for which reason have we got this capability and ability that Allah has given to us my brothers this is due to iman iman this is the light of belief, faith. If Allah, if Allah wanted, if Allah wanted, may not be so that if we didn't have this iman, belief, then instead of being here, where would we be right now? What a big difference. So, Allah Ta'ala has given us a massive gift that He has seated us down in His home and given us all of these bounties and rewards. The reason for this is due to iman. Even we say, oh, I came to the masjid, I prayed salah. But behind all of this, what's the underlying factor? It's the ni'mah, the gift, the favor, the bounty of Allah, Allah's blessing that in our hearts Allah Ta'ala has instilled iman, the light of iman. Iman is such a thing, remember, what is iman? Iman is not on a constant level always. It's not always... In one position, the Quran and the Hadith have explained this in detail. Iman, belief, faith, it passes through different phases, different emotions, it increases, decreases, goes small in scale, goes large in scale, gets spoilt. It goes through different circumstances, different phases, and passing through being small in scale, large in scale, strong, weak. All of these feelings of Iman, they are all a reflection of the phases of life and they affect our phases of life. Our Iman, it affects all of the parts of life that we have to think at this point in time, is my Iman in a strong position, weak position? How weak is it? How strong is it? How high is it? How low is it? I have to keep on reflecting because everything is based on Iman. Somebody prays Salah, somebody doesn't pray Salah, someone's a thief, someone's a bandit, someone's a zani, somebody's an alcoholic. All different actions and sins. And these all due to what? The condition of the iman of a person. Yes, all actions are a reflection of the condition of the iman of a person. So how important, how essential is this subject? That everything is based on the strength of iman. And death, success at death will be based on what? Iman. If you have Iman at that time, you'll be successful. If you don't have Iman at that time, you will fail. So the whole game of life hinges on Iman. Iman. So the feelings and emotions of Iman can be very dangerous, very hazardous. Maybe we don't emphasize on this or focus on this. Every second I should ask myself, what condition is my Iman in? Which phase am I going through at the moment? Which uh, situation am I standing in? A shaitan has made us so ignorant and forgetful that he doesn't let us think about him. And we count everything else. We count everything else. The more valuable something is, well, count it. How much have I got? How much have I lost? But a man, we've never assessed it, counted it, and thought about it. But every second we should be analyzing what is the condition of my iman right now? What position am I in? Because iman continues to fluctuate. It fluctuates, it changes. So first and foremost, what we need to look at to understand the importance of iman is that what are those deeds or facts or proofs that... Uh, what are those physical factors that change Iman? Make it lower, make it higher, make it weaker, make it stronger. What are the things that affect Iman? 
and what other things that reduce him. And obviously if we find this out, then we'll be in a good position. We'll be in a stronger position. So Iman Allah Ta'ala has given to us, so Iman, to strengthen Iman, what do we need to do? What are the factors, the elements that will strengthen Iman, that increase it, take it to a high level? What are those things, those elements? They are all good deeds, amalus salihat. Good deeds that Allah Ta'ala has given us the ability to do. Whenever an individual performs a good deed, directly affects what? The iman of that person. Straight away iman becomes enlightened, illuminated. Pray salah, faraid, the greatest compulsory action. Yes, the light of fard actions. The light, salah, fasting, hajj, zakat. These illuminate your iman the most. Remember this. The faraid, the compulsory actions, are big bulbs for iman. When a person comes and prays salah, he's a man, illuminates, in, gets stronger in intensity. You know, for example, when your iman is strong, you do something, then your iman increases, increases to the heights. So fortunate are those people who are in prostration and they die. May Allah give us death in that position. Ameen. So how great is their death? Because at that time, iman is on the uruj, high level. He's in sujood, prostration, doing tasbih, praising Allah. And whichever state you pass away in, that's the state. Allah says, I want to see that state in which you passed away and you came to me. That's why there's a big dua that Allah, give me a good death, such a death Allah, that is a good death with good deeds, give me the ability to pass away. This is a dua of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. Why? Because a person... It's not about tomorrow or the day after that. Rather, the situation we are in when we die and our ruh is extracted, this is an important point to think about. This is a very important piece of understanding. So, amal, deeds, the greatest deeds are the faraid, the compulsory actions. And when a person implements the faraid actions, then his iman is strengthened. It elevates the iman. Salah, fasting, hajj, zakat, then recitation of Qur'an, dhikrullah, and uh, work of the deen, pro- pro- promoting the deen, anything small or large, even if it's a minor, so-called minor sm- good deed, in our eyes, even if it's so minuscule, a sahabi companion, radiallahu anhu, said, O Prophet of Allah, sallam, Say subhanallah. He asked a question to the Prophet. Says, what a great question. He said, that, tell me what is the best Islam. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reply? Did he say pray tahajjud and uh, keep optional fast or do hajj and umrah? And he said, what is the best action of Islam? Amazing. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us a directive here. That even the so-called minor small deed, if it's implemented with sincerity, will elevate your iman to the heights. So that people don't consider it small. So what did Rasulullah some reply? What did he say? What a great question. What a great question. That tell us the best Islam. Look at all the amal that Rasulullah demonstrated to us. And what was the response on this question from the Holy Prophet Two things he explained. Such um, a response that we couldn't even understand uh, that it's of a high magnitude. The Prophet ﷺ said the best Islam is that even if you don't know anybody, give him salam. Subhanallah. Say subhanallah again. Subhanallah. Greet that person, even if you don't know that person. Such minuscule, small scale actions that Allah Ta'ala has prepared and given to us and distributed us to get us to the heavens. Um, if I say, put your hands up, how many of you do this action? Maybe nobody will put their hands up. Imagine how shaitan and nafs drag us down to the pits. We don't even have this concept, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the deen he has brought, which will give us forgiveness. He knew my ummah, and thereafter they need this assistance. He told us, taught us, the best Islam is that if you know somebody or if you don't know him, if you recognize him or you don't recognize him, greet him with salam. You'll be the best Muslim. You'll be the best Muslim. What a great piece of education. From today, promise you'll give salam to everyone. Promise. This is not the work of Sufis. Who are you? How many shops have you got? What business do you run? Oh, he's a good brother. If I speak to him, I'll make a good contact. And then I'll maybe get married to somebody he knows. And maybe let's exchange numbers. And if I see in the dhikr majlis, if he's not there, let me look out for him, etc., etc. So that's we'll put out, we'll bring our diary out in the majlis just to see how we can benefit from the people who have attended the majlis. We've come to do dhikr, but the friendship that we're making is for the dunya. And that's why we, then we complain that dhikr is not affecting us positively. 
positively. La hawla wa la quwwata billah. Relationships have been made. Business. When you go to the dhikr of Allah and go in such a way that apart from Allah, nobody should recognize you there. Close your eyes, don't look left or right, rich or poor, tejara, businessman. He will give me an introduction to a partner, a marriage partner. No, no, no. Allah, I'm coming to recite your name and I will return with your name. Subhanallah. And that, what do we do? We keep the diary in our pocket. What's your name, brother? Uh, we set an itikaf and we'll leave itikaf with many stories. Many stories. Relationships are made during itikaf. Marriage uh, partnerships are confirmed during itikaf. What will we get from this? Tell me. So, what we're discussing that Islam. Islam doesn't mean that you have to just keep on socializing and going to depth. No. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? What's happening? Because you want to get something out of him. And you say salam in such a way that the next door neighbor will hear. That's how loud you listen. And if someone poor is walking past, we'll turn our face. No, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. If he says salam to you, you won't even respond. You won't even respond. Oh, he's no benefit to me. Forget him. Forget him. He's no benefit. I tell you with certainty that in this masjid, we come morning and evening. Very few people have I seen giving salam, exchanging salam with each other. Between each other. Oh, just put our shoes on the rack, come in with a frown. We sit down and then we depart. Such a big na'mah we leave. What should happen? Whoever you see, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Smile. Oh, if I say salam to him first, then I'll be demoting myself. He should say salam to me first, we say. No. A person who doesn't have a habit of exchanging salams, I'm saying this word, then he is always got a frown. Buta. Always got a frown. You know like somebody's got a swollen face with a frown that Allah's given him a punishment that he doesn't give salam to other people. He's always frowning and sulking. Yeah? But this is a good deed. What is this good deed? That when a person does a good deed, there's a guarantee coming from behind, from the head of the Prophet Wasallam, that he's a man strengthens to the highest level. If he exchanges salam with other people. But what, so if a person, he promotes giving salam, his iman, uh, salam, his iman goes to the heights, high level. So what should we do to strengthen our iman? We should do good deeds. If we want our iman to be strong, enlightened, illuminated, there's only one way to do that. That the good deeds, faraid after faraid, the nawafil, voluntary optional actions, and the, two, the small example of you is small, but it's massive. Wherever you are, wherever you're going, for example, on the way, uh, you see an obstruction, you pick up a twig or a branch, you move it out of the way, or you clean the shoes area, the masjid, people are coming, they're going to put the shoes there, somebody's got a problem, you ask him, what's the issue? What's the problem? You got two brothers are fighting, and we say, why are you fighting? Oh, uh, not that you want to um, fix and mend that broken relationship, no, we want to make a noise, a person who mends the, the ties between two people in this world, Allah says that I will mend the tie with you. Allah says, I will mend the tie with you. I will connect with you. Yeah? So you don't have to come to the masjid for that, do you? Or do wudu, have a tasbih in your hand. These are those deeds, mu'min. The light of a mu'min is such that he is a walking nur. Walking living light. Earning, 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 earning. If you want to earn, and you have certainty of death, then adopt this path. Four, five, time, five times a day, pray salah. Yes, five times a day pray salah. And around that, do all of these deeds from the back, from in front. The Prophet ﷺ gives a stamp of approval. You haven't prayed ishraq, no nawafil extra. You don't have time to do extra worship. Five times salah fried and do these deeds, these amal I've just told you. Then the guarantee comes from the Prophet ﷺ that you won't just leave with normality from this world. You will awaken on the day of judgment with great iman. Will we do this brothers? Inshallah. Don't make your life a waste of time. Don't waste your time in life. And, and do unnecessary actions every second. Say, what can I do? What deeds can I earn? What worship, what, what, um, pious deeds can I, uh, adopt and implement? Not that he's from this region, he's from that region. No. Humanity is the greatest action. Actions due to humanity. A religion just say, ask him, are you a Hindu? Are you a Sikh? Or what religion are you from? No. That don't look around for his deen, his religion. Look, he's a human being. Allah has created him. He's got a problem. Straight away, help that person. Straight away, assist that person. This is ibadah. So iman is then strengthened. So which points am I telling you? The points and the deeds that will strengthen iman. That's point number one. Point number two. 
which is dangerous, which reduces iman. And reduction of iman is a very hazardous state. Reduction of iman. How does iman reduce or weaken? We need to prevent those deeds coming into our life. They, they are the sins. The sins. They are big sins. Zina, adultery, drinking alcohol, interest, stealing, criminal. No, we don't do this. Totally we don't. But the example I gave to you, a small good deed which elevates a man in the same way as you walk along and if a mu'min passes by and you just look at him with anger, with a frown, sulking, then you have spoilt your iman, you've destroyed your iman. The Prophet ﷺ said, don't look at a person with a sulk, with a frown. If you smile, you elevate your iman. What a big difference. What a big difference. So in the same way, we need to be cautious. Even if it's a so-called small sin, from morning to evening, I don't want to do it, because if I do a sin, then it will directly impact my iman, and if it impacts my iman, my iman will reduce. So this decision we have to make every second, from morning to evening, iman goes up, goes down, sometimes strong, sometimes weak. And this is a very, um, you can say, intriguing uh, passage of time throughout the whole day when you're challenging yourself. Challenging yourself. Subhanallah. Allah says in the Quran that Iman, you've got belief, faith, but after faith you go into kufr. You've prayed salah, you've prayed namaz, you leave the masjid, you backbite. You gossip manga. You gossip manga. You spread the bad rumors. You do bad actions. You commit sins. You've done hajj. You've worked hard for hajj. After coming out of hajj, you commit sins. Then Allah says kufr. After Iman, then Allah says the adab will come after that. The consequences are this. Allah says you'll get adab for the actions of uh, sin that you committed after good deeds. That you continue to implement sins to destroy your iman and your good deeds, your worship. Allah said you spoiled your iman. Why? When you committed a sin, Allah said that spoiled your iman, diminished your iman. If we read this verse of the Quran, Allah says that in the hereafter, there will be two types of people in the hereafter. There will be two types of people. Type number one will be those people whose faces will be black, dark. And they'll be dragged towards Jahannam. That's type one people. And type two will be the people whose faces will be glowing, sparkling, white. So what's the difference between the two based on Iman? A, the type one, those people who after having Iman, they continue to sin, doing fisk, evil actions, sinful actions, disobedience to Allah. They didn't stop. They didn't put the brakes on, even though they had the iman, even though Allah allowed them to pray salah, they destroyed their salah, they kept fast, they spoiled their fast, they did dhikr, they spoiled their dhikr, they recited Quran, they spoiled their, their recitation. To this extent, Allah says, whenever I give you the tawfiq to do a good deed, at that time, iman is on the heights, what should you do? You should protect that iman, seal that iman, don't let it get spoiled, contaminated. So what you realize on the sin, is that never should a person do this, that... When Allah Ta'ala gives him the ability to implement good deeds, like Allah has given us the ability to do dhikr, then we need to safeguard this dhikr for the hereafter. Don't destroy it. Don't contaminate it as soon as we leave the house of Allah. Dhikr should continue to elevate our iman as we depart and go away from the gathering of dhikr. Don't let it diminish. So at that time on an individual, so this is the fluctuation. We commit sin, then you do a good deed. So what's the real question here? It's about the hereafter. The hereafter. When a human being's death will arrive, when his death will arrive, at that time, what will be his position? Will a man be down or will a man be high? So this is the test. If a man is high, strong at the time of death, subhanallah, if a man is strong at the time of death, and kamil, complete man, this is our striving, and if Allah says in the Quran, jahadu, jahadu, all life long, the greatest effort and striving for a person of iman is what? That he needs to keep his iman constantly at a high level, so that he can depart this world at the time of death, because we don't know when death is going to come, so he can be prepared, so he can keep his iman strong on the highest level, that Allah Ta'ala has allowed him to, keep his iman at that constant high level so that he takes that iman with him into the qabr, into the grave. This is the mujahidah, the striving, the effort we need to make in our lives. We've done good deeds. But after doing good deeds, you need to persevere. 
You need to stay constant. What do we do? We do tawbah, we repent, Allah gives the tawfiq, explains to us the deen. We come towards salah, we fast, we do dhikr, good deeds. Then after that, we should be grateful for this ability to do good deeds to Allah. That we should be grateful to Allah, that Allah, you give me this such great reward. For example, if person A gives to person B, B a big gift, a reward, a car, a new car, then person B is grateful, I'm going to wash it, clean it, tea cut it, make it sparkling, glowing, I won't waste it, I'll honor it. In the same way, when Allah gives iman to a mu'min, He gives the ability to the mu'min to do good deeds, and iman's on a high space, higher platform, then the mu'min should say, Allah, I want to live my life like this, and die like this with iman in a beautiful high state. Why? Because where we are going to go, the grave, What's the definition of the grave? Tight place. Dark, scorpions, snakes, serpents, and the, the abode of darkness. That's the definition of the grave. There's no more darkness than in the grave. There's no more fear than in the grave. And look at the place we sleep on mattresses and couches and we sit in cars from a place we'll be taken from this world into the grave where there's darkness will be thrown into the soil where there's scorpions and serpents within seconds it takes 10 minutes quickly quickly they do ghusl they bathe the deceased make him naked where do they take him where are you taking him they're taking him to a place no man no son of a man night go to the graveyard in the night what's happening there you can't even hear what's going on there we can't such a place where is the grave made darkness wilderness no one goes there no one walks past there and we go from a place of light we're sitting amongst friends talking chatting laughing they grab him give him a wash a gusel and they throw him into the grave we don't want him to get out go throw the earth on him throw the earth on him suppress him bury him don't let him come back out that's where we're gonna go subhanallah so what should they be the state of our iman when we die and go to that place the grave you know the moon the moon when iman is complete full High, strong. The example is like the moon on the 14th night. Have you seen the moon on the 14th night? The full moon is dark. When the moon, the full moon comes out on the 14th night, and it's there to see in the sky, then it eliminates all of the darkness. Every atom of darkness eliminates, and every particle is enlightened. Everything comes out of darkness into light. You can see everything. You don't need lights at that time. You can see people, vehicles, and buildings, because it's the moon on the 14th night, full moon. So when a Muslim, a Mu'min has come in, man when he's buried in the cupboard as soon as he goes in the grave he's a man he shoots out Kamil complete that that cupboard becomes a globe of light subhanallah and he was scared afraid but he takes that light with him like a shining lamp Kamil imam then shows him the proof in the grave that it enlightens his whole grave subhanallah so this is the striving and the effort we need to do in our lives to get to this end point Okay, don't waste time. Allah, when my death comes, our iman should not be in that situation that is down, weak, dark, may not be in that state. That, for example, you know when there's a light, the sun's out, then suddenly the clouds come, darkness and the rain falls. May our iman not be like that at death time. Rather, our iman should be like the moon on the 14th night full moon and people are burying us in the grave and our graves enlightened with our iman. Do you understand what I'm saying up to now? Do you understand? Is there any um, feeling and understanding that's been generated? Or you're, you're finding it difficult to understand what I'm saying? After salah, you should be happy. You should make intention that Allah, the nur that I've got from salah, that's enlightened my iman, I need to look after it. You've just done dhikr. After dhikr, what do we need to do? When we leave, Allah, you gave me dhikr, and it's ele- ele- uh, elevated my iman to the highest level. I won't let it decrease. That's how we're going to die, Allah. That's what we're going to do in our lives. As alhamdulillah, we do keep on doing good deeds, keep on doing good deeds, then iman keeps on getting brighter and brighter and stronger and stronger. Gets higher and higher. So, may we not be from amongst those people who after ele- elevating the iman, it goes back down again. Yes, kufurtum, Allah says, they go back towards the sinful deeds after strengthening the iman. We should be in a constant level. Will we do this, brothers? True promise? How will we do this then? I ask you. Tell me the methodology. Tell me the methodology. Like I've just told you. Is it done? Oh yeah, we'll walk away and we'll strengthen our iman. How? That if we don't do the action that will strengthen the iman, the person says, uh, I've got a stomach ache. You got a stomach ache? Okay, you got a stomach ache. Uh, you want to cure it? Okay, take that medicine. Take this medicine. A, B. Are you fine? He said, you haven't eaten the medicine. How will you cure the remedy? How will you cure the, the malady? 
So this is Islam. Islam is a practical deen. Life is a reality. Death is a reality. In the grave this will happen. There will be darkness or there will be light. Either iman will be low or will be strong. High or weak. So we need to determine that I've done dhikr. My iman should be strong. I've prayed salah. My iman should be strong. I've done hajj. My iman should stay up. And what's the methodology to strengthen? Maintain the strong iman. If a person comes, by chance someone gives dawah to him. I'll give you an example. Someone promotes deen to pray salah, brother. Okay, I'll pray salah. He comes. Subhanallah. So dawah, who prepared dawah? Tell me who prepared dawah? Allah prepared dawah. Because Allah is merciful to all of His creation. So if the person who is being invited, He accepts, who makes him accept the invitation? Allah. Who makes his heart soft? Allah. Allah Ta'ala is preparing the ground. The, the person gave a message, his heart was softened. He invited him to go to a good place, where there's a good deed taking place. So what does that person need to do when he comes to that gathering? He should say, Allah, I'm so grateful to you, that you give me the ability to implement a great deed. What I want to do now, is I want to maintain this level of ibadah. Maintain. Maintenance. This is the key word here. So let's pray. Allah, I want to maintain this level of good deeds. I don't want to decrease. I don't want to play games. Allah, one day do it. Next day leave it. Allah has made it very easy. Very easy formula to maintain the iman. So for this, what do we need to do? Now come to the key point of today. The key point of today how can it be that when we're dying, passing away, and we're lowered into the grave, that our iman is shining like the moon on the 14th night, and we're being lowered into the grave? How do we get to that stage? All our amal, alhamdulillah, they should be complete, they should be light upon light in our deeds. How do we get to that stage? Shall I tell you brothers? Will we implement that deed? Inshallah. That's what we should say. If we implement that deed, then the guarantee is coming from Imam al the head of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. guarantees. If you implement this key action, 100% you will depart this world with kamil complete iman. Kamil. Will we do this? Inshallah. Shall I mention it to you then, this, this, this deed that will maintain the strength of Imam? There are two companions. Both you read about them. In Fazal Amal, there's a hadith. One companion is Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. Great companion. Great companion. You know about him. And you know his final hadith when Nabi al-Kareem, the gracious Prophet sallallahu was seeing him off to Yemen and he walked with Hazrat Mu'ad radiyallahu anhu to the boundary of Medina Sharif. Great hadith, long hadith. He explained to him, he explained to him, he explained to him. He explained the whole deen to him. He was sending him to Yemen as the governor to promote the deen of Islam. He prepared him completely. Whilst he was departing, after preparing him, Rasulullah sallallahu gave a, a, a Hazrat Mu'ad ibn Jabal posed a great question. That, O oh, Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, great exchange of discussion between me and you. I'm telling you the meaning of the hadith. May, may I assign everything to you, O Rasulullah sallam. You've put everything into my heart. I've understood everything. You've explained everything. Now, now, the meaning of the hadith, I'm explaining to the Mufassirin, the commentators have explained this hadith, that all the amal, the deeds, everything you've explained to me, that can you tell me that all these amal and deeds, that will I be able to maintain the light intensity of these deeds and depart from this dunya? Subhanallah, this is the same question that we're discussing. Who asked this? As a Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu was a great companion, that they're together in front of each other. Who? The head of the prophets and the sahabi. Both are together physically. And Rasulullah said, I love you. And he said, I love you also. Subhanallah. That nobody, no sahabi, I don't think any sahabi had such closeness in the relationship with the maqam that direct Rasulullah said, Muad, I love you. And Muad Radhi said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. Imagine his status. Imagine his iman and he's hearing from his ears the Prophet tell him that I love you. Subhanallah. So, such a great companion, he had this iman. He said, please tell me such a deed. The O Prophet of Allah says, that can completely give me success so that Allah becomes pleased with me. And another companion, Ibn Basr radiyallahu anhu, he also posed this question. And both hadith, if you put them together, they are in fadail amal. Both hadith, same response. Same response. And this is the solution to our... Um, challenge. If we get this solution, then with Allah's fadl, the guarantee given to the sahaba, we'll get that same guarantee. We'll get the same guarantee. 
that a person will depart this world with iman totally because the sahaba were given this guarantee. Will we implement this brothers? Inshallah. This is solving our problem. Very valuable point this is. A guarantee for iman. High level of, of iman will be at the time of death inshallah. Allah s.a.w. said, yes, there is a solution. You will get strong iman at the time of death. There was no hesitation and the question was posed, the answer came straight away, subhanAllah. There was not a problem. When he asked the, uh, the, the question, Rasulullah replied, yes, Mu'ad, that's fine. It can happen. It can be achieved. Just do one action. What is that, O Prophet of Allah Listen, your tongue, ratban, keep your tongue moist with the dhikr of Allah. That whenever your time comes and you're departing from this world, then depart this world in such a way that your tongue is moist with the dhikr of Allah. Say, subhanallah, subhanallah. Tell me, tell me. Has this not solved the problem? Whoever wants strength of iman, strong iman, wants to protect his deeds, his amal, I've done dhikr today, there's this dhikr, I don't want it to be spoiled, my salah, I don't want it to be spoiled, my hajj, I don't want it to be spoiled, my different salahs, I pray, I don't want them spoiled, I don't want to spoil my recitation of the Qur'an, what he needs to do in his life, he needs to grab hold of one action, the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah, the morning and evening we sit down for this, that's the objective. We don't want to be pious people, we don't want to see visions or miracles Allah. All the deeds you've given me the ability to perform, and you are elevating my iman with light. Allah, allow me to depart this world with these deeds. That's why I'm doing dhikr, Allah, due to this dhikr, protect my deeds, and you've promised that you will protect the deeds, Allah. Dhikr, the person who does the dhikr of Allah is given guarantee that whoever does dhikr, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect his iman. And when he'll go into the grave, then just like the moon on the 14th night, his iman will be shining like the moon on the 14th night. It will not go to waste. Allah will give him such emotions, positive emotions after doing dhikr of Allah. Inside him the love of Allah will be so strong that he'll start to shun the sins himself. He will have dislike for the sins. He will hate the sins. He won't need the belief or propagation that have to grab him or tell him whether someone tells him or not. Dhikr of Allah has such a strong effect on his wujud, his body, his iman, his soul. It releases a light, an effect. The deeds he continues to do, those are mal for those deeds to protect them, to maintain them because deeds are spoiled from sins. So he starts to hate the sins. The same man who said, let's have a chit chat, let's go to the cinema and uh, watch a film. He says, no, I don't feel like it today. Oh, I'll meet you tomorrow. He dislikes doing wrong things. Just one action, one action to get to this point. Grab hold of the Kurvala. You leave uh, cannabis, alcohol and sins and criminality. I tell you from experience. Many, many individuals and personalities are so in a very bad state. They could leave alcohol, they could leave cannabis, they could leave the women. But when they understood that dhikr of Allah is such a strong action, Allah Ta'ala has given to us a solution for grab hold of it, then I will automatically shun all of these wrong things. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Because Allah wants us to leave this world with Iman. So He's given us a solution. Leave X, Y, Z. We say, Don't do this. Don't do this. We can't leave them. We're habitual in them. We can't leave the females. We can't leave running after the women. We can't leave listening to the music. We can't leave implementing our actions. You tell that person so many times, it doesn't absorb into his brain. It doesn't penetrate his brain. You can make him afraid, try and make him scared. Tell him Quran, Hadith, Summum, Bukmun, Umyun. Subhanallah. But as soon as you take him and seat him down with a person doing dhikr of Allah, his life would have changed even before that. Subhanallah. Because Allah has made this the system. If you're thirsty, severely thirsty, severely thirsty, to extinguish the thirst, you can drink juice, milk, different drinks. It wasn't, won't extinguish. Until you don't drink cool water, the thirst is not quenched. Soon as a person drinks nice cool water, he says, ah, that's nice. My thirst has been quenched. Because the effect of capacity of water is that it's there to quench the thirst. Allah's put the capacity in dhikr. It takes the sins out from the roots. His desires, wrong desires eliminated. Love for sins is eliminated. Doesn't just eliminate the thirst for sins. Rather, it generates love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is such a beautiful formula Allah Ta'ala has given to us that if you want to strengthen your iman to such a high level that it maintains your iman, strengthens your iman and protects your deeds, what a great example Allah has given. Two things, listen. 
so that you can strengthen this lesson of today even more. That this is how we strengthen our deeds. All the amal that you look in the Quran, in the hadith, the deeds that we should implement, the faraid, compulsory, fasting, praying, hajj, zakat, these are compulsory, yeah? Allah Ta'ala, what does He say in the Quran? Salah, when He mentions salah, Allah says after praying salah, definitely remember me, Allah says, don't forget me. This is a hukum in the Quran. After praying Juma salah, definitely remember you after that, go and seek my fadl and my grace and my bounties in the world. Don't just stop us straight away, run away. No, sit down after Juma. If you want to protect your Juma, hukum of the Quran, then what do you need to do after praying Juma? Sit for a few moments and do my dhikr, Allah says. Then, then go out from the exit door. Pray salah after salah. Immediately do dhikr of Allah so that your salah is protected. You do hajj. After implementing hajj, hajj is such a great status. Different pillars of hajj, different phases, places to go, things to do. Muzdalifah, do dhikr of Allah. Not just wherever you go, any go to Arafah, dhikr of Allah. Do Sa'i, dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah. Drink Zamzam, water, do dhikr of Allah. Tawaf, dhikr of Allah. Why? Because dhikr of Allah has to be done in parallel with everything in your life. All the deeds you are performing, they are elevating you. Keep protecting yourself. Keep protecting yourself. Keep ensuring yourself, Allah says. Subhanallah. Is this not the case? Why? That's why Allah says, it's not a punishment. Dhikr is not a punishment. Allah says, Dhikr will strengthen your iman and protect every single deed you do in your life. So after you do every deed, do Dhikr. If you want to strengthen your salah, protect it, do Dhikr. If you want to protect and strengthen your Jummah, do Dhikr. If you, Dhikr of uh, uh, reciting Quran is Dhikr itself. But do Dhikr of Allah after Quran recitation to protect that recitation. Another, another point. Iman, the limit of iman is what? There's no limit. Is there any limit of Iman? No. Iman is Kamil, Kamil, Kamil. We don't know how Kamil it is because there's no upper boundary to Iman. The more you want, you can enlighten it. The more you want, you can make it more, make it more intense. Iman keeps on increasing, increasing, increasing. Isn't it said that when a person has strong Iman, that it feels like Noor is coming into my heart. So Iman increases. I start, I'm, I'm seeing good dreams. I feel good. I've, I've done ziyarah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I see dreams of good pious elders. And when the dreams come, he has experience in life. I saw Kaaba with my eyes. People say this, don't they? That I, I, I bet, and I shook the hands with the Prophet ﷺ, people say. Because Iman is strengthening, strengthening. There's no upper limit to Iman. This is the same Iman becomes so complete. Iman, Kamil, that in the Akhirah you will go and you will see Allah. Is there any limit? There's no limit. So this Iman, to protect this Iman, Allah has given us an Amal that has no limit. To protect the Iman, that has no limit. Say subhanAllah. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ Allah says, Iman has no limit. There's no had. So to protect it, the solution, the formula I've given to you, to protect the Iman, also has no limit, has no boundary. It is infinite. Do so much dhikr, do so much dhikr. Unlimited dhikr do. Unlimited Infinite, no counting, not hundred this be, five this be, twenty this be, rather what? Unlimited, do as much dhikr as you can. The more dhikr you do, your imam will strengthen, 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 and be protected. That's why I stated, the kathir dhikr, do kathir dhikr. The more you do want to do dhikr, because you want to strengthen your imam, there's no had, no boundary to dhikr, no hundred, not counting, nothing. So a person, he may sleep while he's doing dhikr, isn't it? Oh, he starts talking. Allah says, no, even then you have to do the dhikr of Allah. Say subhanallah. Yeah, this is a different system. Allah says, this is a different system. That's a different system that people are used to. Allah Ta'ala has given a tip. And Allah has given us a, a methodology that carries on doing the work of dhikr. What? The go to wali Allah, friend of Allah, and make your heart the dhakir, Allah says. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah says that how can you do dhikr from your mouth, from your tongue, from your teeth? Dhikr is performed by the heart. Because dhikr has no limit, no boundary. So if your heart is beating, it needs to continue to beat to the name of Allah. Go to sleep. Alladina yadhkuruna la qiyama wa qa'udan wa ala junubi Allah says, standing, sitting, lying down, sleeping, awake, business, home, outside, children, family, wudu, no wudu, talking to friends. There's no relationship, no loss of iman. If you want to keep your iman alive, and if you've allowed the wali Allah to put his finger on your heart and make your heart alive, then your heart will not stop. 
if your heart is attached and connected to Allah, and it will continue doing the dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now tell me the summary of today's discussion. The summary that all of our deeds and our iman we need to strengthen and protect. And to protect iman and our deeds, what has Allah given to us? Dhikr Allah. And dhikr of Allah, how do we need to do it? Not from the tongue, with what? With the heart. And this is called Qalbi Dhikr, Dhikr of the Heart or Maraqaba Dhikr. And this Dhikr we need to learn. And to learn this, you need to go to a Shaykh, a teacher, a Wali Allah, a friend of Allah, and say to him, Hazrat, teach me this Dhikr, please. And that is the summary of today's discussion. Whoever has understood this today, Alhamdulillah, then he should depart from this gathering after learning the Dhikr. Will we learn? Inshallah. I will understand and realize, Alhamdulillah, Allah has made him successful. In the first majlis, he had such as sometimes people come ten gatherings. Some people are so fortunate, they come first time, they become dhakib the first time and they depart from the majlis. Subhanallah. So if you've understood what I've said today, that Allah Ta'ala has explained to us, if we are the people who do dhikr, never be lazy and leave or shun or neglect the dhikr. If you want to pass away from this world with kamili man, do it dhikr in parallel with every deed of your life. And the objective of dhikr is not to become a pious person or cash for miracles or inspiration. No, because we want to go to the grave with the strongest form of iman. And to do that, we need to do dhikr constantly, which is done by the heart, not by the mouth or the tongue. From what? The heart. And to learn the dhikr of the heart, what do we need to do? Go to a sheikh, a qualified person. We don't give him money. You don't need to pay him. You don't need to give him a check. You don't need to do him favors. You don't need to give him a box of sweets. Nothing at all. All you have to do is instruct him. Allah has given you the quality that you can teach people dhikr. So please make my heart alive to the dhikr of Allah. Say subhanallah. If Allah has given you this function, you're a teacher, then Hazrat, why don't you teach me dhikr of Allah? Teach me dhikr of Allah, please. And learn and then depart. Don't think, I'm a sinful person. No, no. When Allah has brought you to this position and He's allowed you to listen, explain to you, made you understand, that means Allah loves that person. Which has come to the majlis. Allah has preferred that person. Allah wants that person's all of his sins to be eliminated. Allah wants to revolutionize his life. Allah wants to purify his life. Allah wants to make that person his friend. Allah says, turn your face and do a U-turn from all of his previous deeds. Wipe his sins away. Allah's father has come to him. Allah loves that person. I want to make you mine. Don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste your time now. Make your time precious, valuable. Chances may never come again in your life. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't say tomorrow, today is today. Tomorrow may never come. If Allah seated us down today, then depart after learning dhikr. Learn the name of Allah, put it on your heart, imprint it on your heart, then go. Don't get up without doing that. Doesn't matter, waswasa comes, whispering of shaitan comes, you don't need to spend, you don't need to give, you don't need to earn. Just say, teach me the dhikr of Allah, alhamdulillah. And your heart will become alive. And then, alhamdulillah, until the grave, the heart will say, Allah, Allah, Allah. And you will depart from this world. And that way, let's do dua. Let's pray. Allah Ta'ala allows us to become dhakir. And He allows us to depart from this world as dhakirin. Ameen. Shabi <laughs> اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وظلمنا وهزلنا وجدنا وخطأنا بامدنا كل ذلك عندنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة يسنة فقنا عذاب النار فقنا عذاب القبر فقنا عذاب الحشر فقنا عذاب الميزان وادخل جنة ما نبرا يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الواق يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا لا تعتقى 
اللهم صمتنا للإيمان وأمتنا للإيمان وأشهدنا يوم القيامة ما الإيمان اللهم نسألك حسن خاتمة اللهم نسألك حسن خاتمة اللهم نسألك حسن خاتمة يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 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 اللهم استعبنا بسنته ونفعنا بمحبته واشرنا في زمرتي يا كريم يا كريم يا كريم اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا قاضي الهاجا اكتهاجاتنا يا دافي البليات اتفى بلياتنا يا شافي الأمران اشفى مرادنا اللهم فينا في بدني اللهم فينا في سمي اللهم فينا في بصري اللهم فينا في بصري اللهم فينا في بصري لا اله الا انت يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين اماما اللهم رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اللہ ہمارے ماں باپ کو بخش دے اللہ مرم برہم ہما کمارم بیانی سغیرا اللہ مرم برہم ہما کمارم بیانی سغیرا اللہ مخل لنا ولی والدینا و استادینا و مشایخنا و مشایخنا و مشایخنا و جمیع المومنین و المومنات و المسلم المسلمين والمسلمات اللحياه منهم واللنوى برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب النظرة يما يسرون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين